Now let's expand on how two different types of heart models are having a clinical impact. In the first instance, let's listen to Andrew Taylor from the Great Ormond Street Hospital in London, who is going to explain what were the overarching goals for the studies in cardiology within Healthy Child. What we've been interested in doing is looking at how we can use engineering and computing using data that we get from patients who've got heart disease or children who've got heart disease and trying to work out if we can use that data to predict how these hearts will respond over time so that we can make the treatment of patients with cardiac problems, children with cardiac problems, uh, better in the future. In the cardiology, Healthy Child focused on tetralogy on, of fallow and on the right ventricle overload. We've seen already that when a patient has a blue baby syndrome with tetralogy of fallow, there is a hole in the ventricle and the surgeon closes it in the first months of life. Over time, this leads to pulmonary regurgitation, which leads to an enlargement in the right ventricle and an overload necessitating a further intervention. Why did we study the challenge of fallow? Giacomo Pontiglione will explain why the numerous visualization techniques that are used to analyze the challenge of fallow made it a very suitable disease for healthy child study. So we, we decided to study post-op to of fallow because in this subset of patients we could use tools like uh, magnetic resonance imaging that would be appropriate in, in, uh, in right ventricular overloads caused by different causes like for instance interceptor defects. Uh, the problem with these patients uh, is that um, over the years some of post-op uh, tetralogy patients develop a dilated heart, some don't, and in patients who develop a right, uh, dilated right, right ventricle uh, because there is a, a significant pulmonary regurgitation, the implantation of a pulmonary valve uh, solves the problem, in some others it doesn't. In other words, even the, 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 the surgical implantation, uh, surgical interventional implantation of the pulmonary valve doesn't, uh, doesn't modify the shape and the dimension of the right ventricle. The ventricle remains large with all the, the consequences of having a, a very dilated right ventricle. So In cardiology, Healthy Child developed a variety of models, all of which have different clinical uses, as Martin Huber is now going to specify. Cardiology. We have been pretty modern because we, from the very beginning, we focused very much on these um, modeling aspects that are now also one of the cores of the VPH initiative. And what we also took special care of, while we have such simple anatomical models or more complex one, the electromechanical models of INRIA, they all have to have some clinical usage. Some are good for diagnosis, they give us measurements, some are good for surgery planning, again because of measurements. Some are good for disease understanding. Or you can even perform virtual surgery with using such tools. Let's look now at two types of models that Healthy Child has developed. And let's see how they have been designed to have a clinical application. Here the first issue was to have quantitative morphological models built on computer tomography and magnetic resonance data being developed by Siemens and to have the clinicians using them to determine if a patient's right ventricular outflow tract would have the right dimensions for an intervention called percutaneous pulmonary valve implantation. The question that the clinician wanted answered was do the dimensions of my patient's right ventricular outflow tract mean that a stent will be able to be fitted without fear of it embolizing because falling out of place? Let's hear from Martin Huber about how these morphological models are applied clinically. To determine the, the suitability, suitability for this percutaneous valve implementation, um, we decided or we, we analyzed which shape are suitable, they did some measurements, they told us also what measurements they did and are the most important for them. And so we focused specifically on the morphology of this pulmonary trunk where we spent so much effort at the beginning of the project manually segmenting and also um, building these 
uh, 3D models. And so we wanted to help with this and give this information again as automatic as possible and um, so also as robust as possible and also over time, so not just end diastolic. Andrew Taylor will explain how, with the use of the case reasoner from Siemens, clinicians can use the models of the right ventricular outflow tract to analyze if a patient is suitable for percutaneous pulmonary valve implantation. So this is some 4D segmentation that we've got, and this comes from Dimi uh, and also Martin from Martin's group at, in Siemens in Erlangen, where we've looked at the data and began to take the raw data. We then do some uh, rigid parameter detection. So here is the pulmonary trunk. Here are the branch pulmonary arteries. This is the right ventricular outflow tract. We've labeled those and then done some center lines for those. And then actually from that data built a model, or more a segmentation as opposed to a model. And so from all of the patients that we do, this can now be run on a sort of bit of Siemens software and is actually relatively interactive, such that once you've got your data from your patients, you can now run this program and immediately decide, is there a narrowing in this patient such that I can put a valve stent in or does this patient need to go to surgery?